was bisher geschah. After celebrating the victory over the entrance guardians, our party turns to the first of two doors. One is already slightly open. Scouting out the room reveals two open chests and a pair of dwarven footprints, even more evidence of Orvo and Ergen's visit. The next door being tightly sealed, Mundo pulls out his trusty crowbar, Denise. With a slight struggle, the stone barrier cracks open. Mundo cautiously sends his spectral servant Charles in first to investigate. After looking at the area, which seems to be an old weapon forge, Charles sees nothing but broken tools and rubble and a pair of wiggling feet sticking out from under a rock pile. Mundo orders Charles to investigate the feet further, not just by a simple look, but by a light tickling. Charles does as his master says. A low grumbling is then heard from under the broken stone. The party decides they must free this poor trapped soul. They spend time tossing and rolling the heavy rocks away until, to their surprise, an undead smith rises from the debris. He's not happy that his rest was disturbed. Easily taken care of, the smith now rests eternally. Not to have his efforts go to waste, Mundo crouches down and searches the body. He finds some nice treasure, some broken but yet valuable smithing tools. He attempts to slip these into his bag unnoticed by his comrades, but the sharp eyes of Favodin catch a glimpse of the bard's hands. He asks Mundo what exactly he has found there. Mundo quickly stands up straight, smiling with his devilish charm, explains that he was just reaching into his bag for some bread. The fight had given him quite the hunger. Mundo then pulls out a piece of the treasure and convinces Farudin that it is a chunk of bread. Moving even deeper into the ruins, the party unseals the next door. As they do this, a stench of death and decay hits them, like a kick from a giant. All but Farudin keep it together as the poor wood elf then begins to vomit. The group now faces a hallway full of undead who have been left to rot in this frozen tomb for centuries. Rook jumps in and starts his work, slamming and stabbing the mindless enemies while Farodin takes careful aim with his bow and Mundo gracefully strikes with his rapier. The cursed foes lay defeated in a pile on the floor, the head of one pinned to the wall by an arrow of Farodin. Their confidence is high. They then set their efforts on the next door. This one proves to be more difficult than the others. Mundo jams Denise into the door crack and ties her off with his tsunami strap. Now all three step back and pull together. This does the trick. The door shifts open, releasing some of the most challenging enemies the group has faced yet. They have disturbed four magical swords. These razor-sharp points of steel sent themselves flying at the party. Swooping around the heroes like a swarm of angry hornets, the swords make strike after strike, hit after hit. Mundo has his favorite man blouse ruined. Farudin takes a double step to the leg, but Rook shrugs off the strikes like the annoying pets they are. Luck is on their side though. A few missed blows from the swords open up the opportunity for a counter-attack and the party is able to shatter every last one of them. Covered now in their own frozen blood, the group secures the newly opened room and tries to heal themselves before moving on. Rook, sitting on the floor, picking bits of broken sword out of his armor, Farodin in the corner has his eyes on the door. Mundo sits on a stone block, pulls out his lute and calms the group with a somber tune. The clock is still ticking. What other threats await them?